and very interesting panel now. So, for which I would like to invite uh, Mr. Amar Deshpande, Amar Vyas. So, Amar is a podcaster and author. He's an alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad and uh, University of Illinois, USA. He's a corporate professional turned entrepreneur. He runs My Kitab, which is India's first broadcast on uh, book publishing and marketing. Together with his wife, he runs Gata Story, a podcast production and marketing startup whose shows has received over 1.5 million listens till date. Apart from being the author of Amol Dikshit series of books, Amar writes on topics related to entrepreneurship, uh, travel, podcasting, and sustainability. So let's see what Amar um, has in conversation with the other interesting panelists uh, of today. Amar, over to you. Uh, just for uh, good afternoon, everyone, and hope you all had a great lunch, and hope most of you will manage to manage to stay awake after this session is over, because uh, I'm just going to step down while I'm introducing the guest. Thank you, Archana. And uh, she has kindly volunteered to do the time check for us at, at yes. I think, around 2.35, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, 3.15, right, about? Yes. Uh, 10 or 15 minutes before the session uh, uh, is open to the audience, she's going to remind us that you have a voice too, uh, in a language of your choice. So uh, a little bit about the connect between me and PBLF. Uh, five years ago, uh, I was just about to, you know, put up my corporate hard hat. I come from construction, so everything is about hard hat and work boots for me even now. Um, and I had attended BBLF uh, 2015 edition. Five years later, uh, sort of a full circle that I'm here, uh, you know, facilitating a session of some great speakers. In the meantime, uh, for my Kita podcast, which was our first show that we launched at the Gata Story. Uh, there's been a BBLF Connect. I was just counting our, of the 115 odd episodes that we have done so far. Uh, there are seven authors or guests with the BBLF Connect. And I spoke to a few of you. Looks like we'll complete uh, you know, double digits by the end of the year. So with that context, uh, let, me, uh, let me very quickly introduce you to the guests uh, today. First and foremost, uh, we have Vikrant. Uh, I'm not just going to go alphabetically, but I'm also going to tie back to the My Kitab Podcast Connect. Because uh, five years ago, uh, yeah, 2014, okay. September, he was the first ever guest of the first ever podcast you know, that we did on book publishing in India. So why not have him first? Uh, Vikrant's an alumnus of uh, IIM Bengaluru. He's been a corporate executive. He's uh, been in academia. Uh, I think he's also worn the entrepreneur's hat. Uh, he is a book author, translator, believes in multi-format uh, you know, content production when it comes to books, a great audiobook narrator recently uh, through our friends at Storytel. And uh, he only knows seven languages. So, uh, you know, I don't know whether in his sleep he's able to translate the books from one language to another or not. A very smart marketer also, though he does not tell that, Four of his books have been made into Bollywood slash, you know, uh, Marathi films, uh, including Bajirao Mastani, which was his translation, Rao. In fact, Vikrant, you should have been on the panel on the Tatas because you also translated the book on Tatas from Marathi to English. Perfect. There you go. So, uh, his other book was uh, Thugs of Hindustan, Gujarati to English. And uh, he's just translated another book uh, uh, just yesterday got published, right? What's the name of that book? Karna. Karna. So, this is based on the Marathi book uh, right? Translated from Marathi to English. So uh, that's Vikrant, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You can have a seat, please. Next, uh, we have Sharman. Hi. I'll let her have a coffee. I'll move over to Mahindra real quick because she got Bengalurd. Only took her two hours to get here. So, uh, Mahindra, why don't you come over here? You only had an hour and a half commute from Ahmedabad, so you are, you know, you're okay on the traffic count. Mahindra uh, also has been a past guest. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, they say, uh, you know, uh, like they say, right? You shame me once, uh, uh, you know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you, or something like that. So I'm just going to, you know, twist and turn and, and uh, you know, modify that phrase. Once an entrepreneur, the wow is on me. Twice an entrepreneur, the wow is on you. So he's got only two ventures going on right now. One of them happens to be Madhu Bharti, which is trying to bring Indian languages into digital platforms, platforms now, right? 
uh, started out with ebooks in the Gujarati language. Uh, only about 80 million downloads later, now he's looking at Hindi, uh, he's looking at beyond text into an OTT platform and a few other things that we will talk about. Uh, Mahindra only knows four languages including Sindhi, so please pardon him. <laughs> Mahindra, over to you. Uh, yeah. And uh, now we can probably get back to Sharmin. Uh, also, she knows only three languages, right? Between Only five. Okay, fine. Uh, I only know six, so I'm competing with you there, Vikram. The point I was trying to make was not to show off that the audience knows too many languages, uh, the, uh, the speakers know too many languages. The point was, we do have a common language here, which is English. However, the story does not end there. In fact, the story begins the moment you know more than one language. Sharmin, uh, you are trying to add a technology element to the whole storytelling and the content space, right? And uh, you are also a 2x entrepreneur, no? Okay, uh, so wow on you, yeah? Uh, I'll, you know, whenever you're ready, you can move on and we'll get started with our session. Uh, we will try and introduce a little bit of Kannada. My Kannada is very bad. Uh, so, you know, Shama Madi, Nange. Uh, Vikrant's good at it. We will make him speak. We will make each one of them speak in at least one language that is not English. The idea being that how does the context, the content, uh, the content, the communication, and most importantly, what is it that you're trying to tell? You know, the, the marketing element. How does that change the moment you change the language? The reason for that is, uh, just yesterday, uh, for Balgatha Podcast, uh, which is our uh, storytelling platform for kids, uh, we launched the story of Lord Ganesh in three languages, English, Hindi, and Marathi. Uh, my wife's working on Gujarati version of it. We had a terrible time translating the story between each of the four languages. So we threw the translation copybook out of the window, and we said, let's hold on to the story element, and we'll add local you know, context to it, and build our own story, which turned out to be a very fun activity. So, uh, with that background, my first question to Vikram. What on earth is translation? There is no market for translation. Who is going to read your book? Why even get into it? It's a waste of time. You've heard all these questions before. Why do you still do it? And what is your message to the audience here? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, why translate? I think uh, first and foremost, it's, it's, it's not the money which makes you do that. I began because I realized that in Marathi, which is my mother tongue, though I speak many other languages, uh, that there is just so much to tell and I, the, my first audience or my readers were my children because they don't read Marathi, but they were such wonderful stories which I wanted them to know. So I just translated for the lack of it. And when I sent it out to people, they said, this is brilliant. Did you write the stories? I said, no, no, these are translations. And that's where Shivaji and Bajirao Mastani and Thugs of Hindustan and all that came about because there are such wonderful stories in Marathi, in Gujarati. Those are the two languages at least I can read, write, speak and understand and think also to some extent in them. Uh, that I decided to translate into English. But there's a lot of translation the other way around which I feel needs to happen a lot more. Perfect. I just want to build on the aspect there. Uh, is there from a commercial point of view, uh, is there a market for books in languages other than English, number one? Let's get more specific because we are in BBLF. For business literature, is there a market at all at this point in time? If so, where is it? I've not found one. Yeah, I th uh, you know, the, the book I recently translated, Tata's The Family That Built a Business and a Nation, was originally written in Marathi by Girish Kuber, who's a writer of Lok Sattar, and it was a bestseller in Marathi. And which is why we picked it up into English. So, uh, and surprisingly, that was, the, to my knowledge, the first comprehensive biography of the entire Tata family, and it came in Marathi first. So, which was which was remarkable. Wonderful. I think and there was a small local publisher who commissioned yes. you the translation, right? Yeah. Someone called Harper Collins. <laughs> yeah. So the English. So, which is the Harper Collins, Penguin, so many of these. Uh, Pan Macmillan. I'm working with Amazon now. You're ex-employed. These are where. Uh, they are picking it up, but I still believe that the market for the local language per se is huge and the English publishers don't understand that so well. Fantastic. With that, let's uh, move on to Mahendra, uh, someone who understands local language market better than any of us, I guess, on the panel from a content marketing point of view. Mahendra, 
uh, you started in a market which probably very few people here have an idea other than kakras and doklas and jilebis and garba, I guess. Uh, what made you get into the Gujarati book market and uh, I mean 80 million, 8 million downloads, right? I said 80, I'm sorry, it is 8, 80 lakhs. Uh, that's phenomenal. I mean, so all this, was this all audience just like dormant waiting for the right content to come to them in the right format and you just facilitated it? Or did you have to do some voodoo to actually make that happen? It is, it is both the ways. So Matra Bharti currently is uh, into four languages, delivering the literature stories and uh, and uh, so so on in whatever you call as a written content is being delivered in four different languages and that too originally written by the people not translated now talking about what was present and what uh, we delivered yes uh, the mainstream media especially the publishers the newspapers the magazines have limited space let us agree on that and having that limited space they have limited opportunities also and with the presence of digital media, when I realized that this sector is not looking into vernacular and let me uh, be the flag bearer of it and take it and I'm, I'm a computer engineer and love for language and love for writing has been since the school time. So I've been writing uh, uh, poems and stories and I, I was writing in my mother tongue, I was writing in Hindi and was participating and winning awards in uh, story writing and poem writings in school. So that was a connect originally. And uh, basically when I realized this uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, I thought let us sail the boat towards the direction where nobody is looking into. And Gujarat being uh, the entrepreneur blood, the entrepreneur uh, DNA, I said let us try this and let us make this happen and it is happening. And to correct the numbers, which you might have seen on LinkedIn, that 80 uh, lakh download, it is 1 crore 10 lakh story download so far. <laughs> and people are writing, people are reading because of the open space, because of the, the basically youngsters are connecting uh, to the today's era. Whatever we are, basically whatever we write, if it, is, if it relates to today's problems, the today's joy, it is it is having its own market. So that's where Matrubharti is, that it publishes majority of the writers into the age of 18 to 30. Okay, fantastic. I want to build a little bit more on that because that's also the audience for a completely different kind of a format, which is video. And uh, you recently ventured into the OTT space as well, right? Covering uh, plays, events like this, right? Uh, do you think that's that's a softer entry point or softer way to connect to the audience who otherwise may not be a reading audience? Uh, partially, yes. There is a point where you can connect literature to the non-reading community. And when we talk about literature, it, it, is, it is also into the song as a, as, a, as a lyrics. It is also into the play as a script. It is also into the web series as a story, as a script. And there are more number of people who would, uh, who would enjoy the web series on Netflix rather than picking a book from uh, the backside library and read it. And our idea was to connect that and uh, the other opportunity we are creating for writers to giving them exposure to the, to the, uh, the video uh, and the connecting them to the producers. So the story is written on our platform are now being considered as uh, web series and uh, the plays and the short films which is uh, which is uh, basically the sufficing the purpose of business that connecting the dots and bringing uh, the uh, the more content from the roots towards the people and that too in vernacular fantastic so from a content aggregator to a content i guess uh, from a storyteller to a content aggregator to now a content uh, i guess uh, discovery platform that's been your journey right yes uh, so all of this requires uh, uh, a very little tiny element called technology, right? And that's where you come into the picture, Sharman. But you're an author as well. So you're both on the content creation side, production side that is, and then also the marketing and the distribution through technology side. So what's your story? Uh, so let me first give you a slight background of what exactly we are doing and why we're doing this. Uh, so 
I have been writing books and you know uh, producing content in the last ten years. So uh, as a content writer myself, I think the biggest challenge that I was facing was, uh, you know, we can all do research about what we have to write and then we can write content or get that written by someone else. But the biggest challenge that I had was to evaluate if my content was engaging enough and if it would actually strike a chord with my readers. So um, I was like can we use technology to solve this? So before doing that, what I did was that I personally interviewed about 500 content writers slash marketers globally, uh, both India and the US, and uh, the results were fascinating. So it turns out that everyone has the same problem. They were all thinking that, yes, I'm not sure, what is the difference between being a best-selling author and an okay, okay author? So, um, and the difference basically lies in this, that you know, a best-selling author with his content can essentially trigger that response from his audiences. So we were like, why not use technology, so artificial intelligence, to help a writer predict the emotional engagement of their written content and also give you smart recommendations of what words and phrases that you need to use to help you build that connect. So basically in a single line, optimizing emotions in your content in order to help you build that connect with your audiences. That's Fantastic. What we do. Fantastic. So that is essentially writing for discoverability, initially, as a, as a door opener. Would that be a fair way to summarize? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm not a techie, like I said before, so I, I just so try I, to... So I'd just like to add on, you know, so initially when we started, so we are basically a startup, you know, so I, um, I come from the very startup background, so this is my second company. Uh, so uh, essentially when we started, we started only with English, you know, because uh, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but all of my books are in English, uh, but then being in India, we completely understand the fact that only 10% of India communicates in English. The remaining 90% is in the vernacular languages, which essentially says that the next billion users, you know, would be in the vernacular space, out of which Hindi being the largest spoken language in the country right now, followed by Marathi and so on. Hindi has about 500 million plus users. I was like, that's a huge, huge market untapped. Uh, and of course, thanks to platforms like Matru Bharti, which is essentially catering to a huge amount of audience, vernacular audience. So now I'm happy to tell you that we've built the same tool in Hindi as well. So uh, for you know anyone who's so, uh, you know who's into cr uh, Hindi content creation, can essentially use the tool to understand how they can engage better with their readers. Fantastic. So uh, we use a couple of such toys, but largely for uh, English to Hindi and then Marathi and Gujarati and other translations. Uh, one of them, of course, is Google Translate and, you know, it works sometimes, other times it does not. Uh, not to mention, sometimes it gets confused between genders. So, you know, suddenly Krishna is a Gualan and, uh, you know, uh, Radha is playing the flute. So, uh, I hope that, you know, that's, that's a journey, right? That's a journey we all go through. So, you know, essentially when I say that I help you write better, I'm talking more from a readability perspective also about uh, you know uh, helping you understand the tonality and the emotional aspect so what we've done basically is very simple you know i mean ultimately ai is no magic it's just about acquiring the data and then training your algorithm so what we've done is that we've basically defined writing as a new art of science so uh, we've you know defined seven different emotions which are extremely important for a writer to connect with his audiences these emotions being joy, anger, disgust, fear, trust, anticipation, likelihood, if I said seven. Uh, so once you click on the emotion or the tonality, you know, uh, positive, negative, neutral, once you select the emotion and the tone that you want to trigger, the tool is smart enough to give you recommendations on that. And in turn, also correct your grammar and your spelling. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Vikrant, I, I just want to build further on the tone, the, you know, right, using the, the, I guess, the right context, uh, etc. right? Uh, you have translated books across languages and then across geography, history, culture, context, etc., etc. right? How does that work in the physical world? And my follow-up question is going to be for you, Mahendra. Uh, in that case, that they say that these days you write for two sets of uh, eyes, right? One is the human eye and the other is the, the computer eye or, or a piece of software code, right? So, uh, you know, how has what Sharmin just spoke about, you know, how much of that has been uh, translated, absorbed and systematized, systematized into your uh, workflows or your processes so far? So, uh, translation, uh, you know, whom do I write for? It, I think the, the, 
when you look at it, you're talking about the economics part of it. How does the economics work, or how does the well? It's a product that you are a manufacturer of. Yes. Right. Uh, we are in a business literature festival. There are inputs going in. There's a product at the end of the day. Four piece, five piece, six piece, whatever you want to call it. What's going on? Okay. So let me give you an idea about the book uh, I'm writing. This is my own own book now. On it's a sort of a travelogue, come story of Rama and the loosely titled in the footsteps of Rama. And that's being published by Harper Collins next year. Uh, right from day one, it was very clear that this book would be translated into Hindi, English, Tamil, Marathi, and Bangla, because that's the big audience. You mentioned Hindi, and then followed by Tamil, Marathi, and Bangla as the three other major languages. There's an audio book which is coming out, and we also see an opportunity for a talking series. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, one has to look at. Uh, any product from different segments perspective it's not just the, the English as she said it's just 10% there's a large or readership audience which is waiting for the same content being made available in different forms audio book like storytell I did a lot of work with them uh, today I, I, I meet a lot of people who are just reading uh, I mean listening to books rather than reading them as they travel Bangalore Today I wasted two hours coming from the airport. I could have finished off a book. So, so we, and so audio books are catching up. Uh, same is with people want to listen to the author rather than read. So, one of the authors which comes to my mind like Devdutt Patnaik, whom a lot of people listen to. They may not necessarily have read his books. So there are different ways by which the same content can be delivered. Uh, if you ask for just the published book version which is available as a hard hard copy or as a Kindle or an e-book version, it may not be the whole story. I think that's just 10% of the total uh, business one can get. Okay, fantastic. Mahendra, you got a pieces, piece or several pieces of content in yes. multi-language, multi-format. Yes. And how do you actually go ahead and deliver? More importantly, how do you make sure that the audience is able to discover it? Yeah, so see, when it comes to content, uh, there are different varieties and different uh, habits of people to consume it. Right. There is, a, there is a group who would love to see uh, the morning motivation messages and then there is a group who would love to read a full set of novel of 200-300 pages. You're not talking about people who send good morning flowers on WhatsApp, right? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when we started uh, Matru Bharti and uh, we started with a longer format of content where uh, the we basically uh, started publishing the content from the authors, those who were writing uh, the novels, especially the fiction side of novels, the love stories, the thrillers and so on, the fantasies and all. And that was growing with its pace. But then when we realized that the, the, the common set of readers, those who also read uh, a, a poem, a short uh, story, a microfiction, uh, are not connecting with us because they see this is too long content for them and uh, we they may not engage with the, our content so we started another format called bite size content and that bite size content is the one which has a larger audience uh, and these are the guys who first in start interacting or rather than interacting with the content over a period of time they start writing also so it is, it is, and, and I'm, I hope uh, Vikrant would agree to it, that a good reader is a good writer too. You need to be a good reader first before you become a good writer. Absolutely. So uh, that is where uh, uh, we came, uh, basically the Matur Bharti's uh, way of using pattern which we have observed. The first 15 days, someone uh, uses the app uh, for connecting with the content and the 16th day is the first word he would write. And that's how after the 16th day of writing a small poem to a 16th month where he would start writing a novel. So that's where the different formats have uh, basically connected people and that has grown as a business. Uh, basically, as you have to sustain and you have to grow. So as a business aspect, we have uh, basically considered different formats and we are working very well, including the short format videos between the size of one minute to three minutes. So somebody uh, reciting a poem or somebody telling a story in two minutes or three minutes, we call that as a uh, uh, Kahani Metro. 
So the Kahani Metro is the format where in a metro speed, uh, somebody is telling a short story. So that's where different formats have helped and even videos, uh, Amar. Videos, uh, we have 10,000 plus videos between the size of 1 minute to 3 minutes having uh, 10 million plus views on our platform. Okay. Fantastic. So, Sharpin, back to you. Uh, you've got a translator and then, uh, you know, essentially a content platform slash marketer. Either Vikrant or Mahindra approach you and say that, okay, I got this body of work or this form of content in language A, I need that in language B. I need help. So, how do you exactly help them? I'm so glad you asked me that question. You know, every startup is looking for such an opportunity. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I... So, when Benedict contacted me, and when I saw that, you know, on the names, um, both of these people were there, I was like, these are the guys I need to work with. So, first of all, thank you so much. So, yes, with, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to a platform, like, let's say, Matra Bharti. So, yes, absolutely, you know. So, I think the beauty of technology is this, that it is nothing but a very simple integration, you know, which we can integrate with the platform. And, uh, you know, then the end user, who's the, who's the writer, so when he's writing content on his, let's say, uh, you know, on, on the editor, so exactly at the same time, my technology can help you understand how engaging your content is, how emotionally, you know, you can connect better with your audiences. And when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to language, uh, multiple languages, I have actually used his books as data to feed into my algorithm. Wow. So thank you. Thank you. There you, you go. You got some validation. <laughs> so yes, you know, because unfortunately, the the biggest challenge that you know we currently face is that there is not enough, uh, you know, structured Hindi content available. So we've actually hired ten linguists, you know, who are just doing nothing but working on your writing. Where what they are doing is that they are just annotating it to you know all the possible structured form of content and then <laughs> we should talk yes and then you know that she is being fed check. as data into the system so you know obviously we, we need that so both of these I mean so essentially it's like a team of three you know so as, as, as collaborators fantastic one more question and then we'll throw it open to the audience because I want to ask this, I've been meaning to ask this question to Vikrant because this was a conversation we had on a very hot sunny afternoon in Vadodara at a cafe coffee day Vikrant, you're talking about consulting with the business school and the talk there was about uh, case studies and this is in Surat and largely catering to a non-English speaking business community, right? And you were talking and I would, you know, we were kind of brainstorming on what form of case studies, what, what form of business literature may resonate well with them. Five months later, where are we in that journey and what was the right answer to that quiz? Yeah, I think a uh, lot of people miss out that in business schools, you know, we're teaching, we learned when I was in IIM, uh, probably it was relevant at that point in time to some extent, talking about what Pepsi did to Coke or what Unilever did to Procter & Gamble. The, the students in Surat, especially for family businesses or people who are studying to go back to starting a business, don't learn much from these multinational case studies. What they're looking for is, so we did a, we are doing a case study on Mr. Dhokla which is a, uh, a young guy who started a Dokla franchise and he had four shops. And while talking, he said that, you know, my biggest challenge today is that Swiggy takes away 21% of my bottom line. And, and it's a double-edged sword. So, should I continue with Swiggy because it's giving me great top line, but it, my margins are zero. And so, these are the real-life problems the business school students should be uh, made aware of rather than esoteric case studies downloading from Harvard Business Review, and HBS are of no use. So I am working with the faculty in this particular university to develop case studies which are local in nature, which address real problems sim from simple things like how to start a franchise to like is Swiggy a threat or an opportunity and that's what they are looking for. And the, the pedagogy uh, or rather the, the way we discuss the case studies is again the way most of us talk in our offices itself which is multi multilingual. It's not English, it's Gujarati, Hindi, Marathi or whatever language mixed. And that's the way we're building the case studies as well. Because we really believe that teaching is about the essence and not what language in which you're teaching. So communication Fantastic. is about it. 
thank you so much for this. Over to the audience and just one request, uh, uh, you know, with Charmin in Bangla and uh, also in uh, Hindi or English with Vikrant, you can ask questions in Tamil, uh, Marathi, Gujarati, let, Kannada. Let me just clarify. Okay. There are five, five, six steps to a language. You okay. understand, I understand but, Kannada and Tamil. They can ask I, the question. You can I answer speak in the English, English Marathi, Bangla, Gujarati and I read, write them and I think in Marathi and in Perfect. We are in a, in a panel or a, of a session of multiple languages. The audience has a right to ask a question please, in the language of their answer. choice. You have a choice to answer in a language of your, your preference, right? With Mahendra, Sindhi, Marathi, uh, sorry, Gujarati, Hindi and English, okay? Over to the audience. Ladies first. Yes, ma'am. I use all the seven languages that Vikrant mentioned to communicate with him at home. <laughs> and sometimes there's no language at all. Okay, my question to <laughs> all three of you is, do you think AI is going to take away or take a big chunk of the translation business and, you know, how is it going to impact translation? Because you have, you know, all these apps and things People can just use a Google Translate tomorrow rather than use any of one of us. First of all, thank you so much. And that is one question that every other stakeholder in my company is currently asking. <laughs> that, you know, is, is AI going to take over my creativity? So I don't think so. Uh, um, you know, because uh, being a writer myself, I would say that nothing can ever take over human creativity. Uh, you know, humans are going to be humans. Uh, you know, AI is no magic. AI is basically just a set of data being fed into a system. And then just like a robot, the system is basically giving you results. You know, so I think the, the beauty of, uh, you know, an AI based algorithm is that AI is meant to make your life easier, not replace your creativity. So for example, even the tool that I have, right? So we have about, you know, um, 70 odd enterprise customers right now and you know they are uh, which is essentially catering to about 600,000 users each one of them had the same question and I was like listen I am here to make your life easier not take over what you're doing so basically my job or my tools job is to essentially help you sharpen slash enhance your creativity and you know help you save time on, on the entire process. That is exactly what I'm doing. I'm not trying to replace your creativity. It is up to you to select what you want. Yeah. I am actually going to cheat and take away the time from Vikram and Mahendra. May we or a coffee break, they could answer their question. Uh, maybe just one more question for the audience and then we'll wrap up. You put me in a position where I can't say no to you, right? I, I yes, stole, we'll I stole have, time from we, We'll have one more question. Yes, young man. So my question is to Mike. <laughs> Hello. So my question is to Sharma. Uh, so authors are generally considered to be not earning their uh, uh, money from writing but from some other world. In that situation, um, will they be able to afford your tool because AI, all those technology, right? So it comes to the cost. So for the poor author, how does how he is going to afford that type of tool? So in order to know the pricing, so essentially we are a monthly subscription tool. So um, we can talk about that offline, but just to give you some perspective, if you use Grammarly, right? So Grammarly essentially corrects your elementary grammatical and spelling corrections, and now they also have a plagiarism check. Let's just say that, you know, we are a layer on top of Grammarly. We basically, uh, you know, have added emotions and engagement and connectivity to what Grammarly does. So it is on a similar subscription model and for our B2C users, you know, uh, essentially if, if you're a blogger or an author, then it's on a freemium model, you know, so up to certain features it's free and if you want premium level recommendations, then yeah, there is a, a small monthly subscription charge. But like I said, because I'm a writer myself, uh, the good thing is that there is absolutely no limit on your words. It can be, like he said, bite-sized 50 words to uh, you know, 100,000 words, which is like a manuscript, there is absolutely no limit. You will, uh, you know, on, on that small monthly subscription, you can use it for as long as you want. So, yeah, we can we can talk uh, talk about the pricing offline. I'm going to be kind to you and give you two more questions. Thank so you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, two more questions. Yes, sir. In regional language, please. Which regional language do you speak? You want to go, sir? You'll have to speak. So, my question is to... Mr. So Mahendra, it is known that uh, Gujaratis don't invest in books. 
Okay. So we'll kind of say the innovation shares. But you are clicked in the Gujarati market. So does that show there is a much bigger market in other languages? And how did you crack the Gujarati market first? I must say... Uh, popular, popular demand. Gujarati mein jawab dijiye. <laughs> Gujarati khub sara graha koi chhe. Emne sari vastu aapo e bargain kare. Ele bargain kare aap pachhi paan e loko tamne sari ch price aap hai. Karan ke there are 6 crore plus Gujaratis. And uh, across the world there are 1 crore plus. Across everywhere. And it is only the matter that they what what you deliver to them and what they are getting, they certainly pay for it. And uh, that is the reason Gujarat's own book market is close to 1500 crores, which is a very good number. Is your audience question from outside India? Sorry? Is your audience Yes. So our audience is from outside India also, but their age group is 40 plus. In India, our age group is between 18 to 35. And outside of India, it is 40 plus. Oh, I have some questions. You're the best-selling author. Please go. Which language will you speak in? Hindi may be okay. I, or English, sorry. I, it's a great combination because as an author, what I feel is like, uh, instead of just, you said that uh, AI cannot take away the creativity, but pardon me, wasn't there a project recently when some student like trained the AI tool on all Hemingway or some novels and you can feed a thing and uh, ask him to write like Hemingway, right? So I mean, maybe it's not that difficult to imagine in future. So as an author, it's always like, is that creativity always probably at risk? Secondly, I want to ask you guys is, uh, how much do you think is, uh, instead of uh, earlier the advice used to be that the author is writing what he wants, but now you, do you think it's a big consideration that we have to look at marketing aspects, what will be done and then write that? Are you seeing I, I I don't agree with that because if I, so there were many books which my uh, publisher wanted me to translate, but if they didn't resonate with me, I just couldn't get the right uh, output. So I have to love what I am doing before I can expect somebody else to, to love it. So I believe that the author has to be very loyal to his work. Loving it really, if it touches your heart, if it actually gets you to tears, you can be quite sure that the reader or the audience or the listener would be touched. Uh, I don't think it can be the other way around, force fitting, uh, that give what the world wants. If what you get to the world is fantastic, there's, there are a lot of people wanting to buy it. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, that is correct. That whatever basically uh, it is. Should it is, we? It is both the ways, right? It is what you believe into and what. Uh, and uh, basically, Hindi me ek cheez hai jisme hum bhava nuvad kehte. I would certainly like to mention that it is not anuvad. It is bhava nuvad. So bhava nuvad or Angrezi ka Hindi me agar diya jata hai, to Hindi ke context ke saath hi diya jata hai. और लोगों को भावानुवाद हो तभी अच्छा लगता है। Word to word translation हो तो काफी सारी English की हिंदी अनुवादित book जैसे देवदत्त पटनायक की book मैंने हिंदी में पढ़ी तो सरदर्द हो गया मैं पूरी नहीं कर पाया क्योंकि मतलब जो अनुवाद का स्तर रहता है वो अनुवाद का स्तर और समझने वाले की अनुवाद करने वाले की जो समझ है अगर उसमें बहुत बड़ा वो जमती नहीं है, वो जमती नहीं है तो फिर रीडर तो उसको कहाँ जमाएगा? वो तो <laughs> उसको चिपका के रखना है तो उसको देना पड़ेगा और it is it is about what content you deliver, it is all about content is the king. One last question. Uh, this is for Mr. Mahendra and Vikram. Um, as vernacular writers uh, or you know promoting vernacular literature, have you faced snobbery from the English speaking community and or have you uh, found acceptance in the community or have you proved them wrong? So what is the kind of reactions that you have got uh, from the other side of the uh, writing community? I think I, my numbers basically which, which Vikrant has mentioned that 1 crore point 10 lakh people have already downloaded the vernacular content and that shows itself and why to compare? The question is like 
why to compare with an english writer who is who is getting say 10 lakh plus uh, of his books sold 1 million plus books sold my question is and i am very serious about this question how many of them actually read it 1 million books sold and how many of them read it and on our my platform i can prove that whoever is downloading 80% of them are reading it so what we read is what connect to us not what is being sold to us i can carry a book here which can set an impression of myself ke bhai ye itni badhiya book pad raha hai to aadmi bhi itna acha hoga ho sakta hai par kya main padhta hu kya maine zindagi mein utara kya usko ha so i i i'm i'm sorry and don't quote me for these words from my end being a vernacular uh, space player but many of those books are being sold and will never be read and in vernacular content most of them books people live live those books live those stories and mention that whenever i uh, participate in literature festivals those are being taken as context those are being taken as examples and that's a beauty of vernacular No doubt, if you uh, if you see the uh, Prime Minister speaking in Russia, he was very clearly speaking in Hindi because there are crores of people back in India, not for those ten people sitting on the stage. So he knows what his audience is. Similarly, the vernacular uh, people are dying to read great content in the local language. You see a lot of this series on Netflix as well; they are all in Hindi. Not many of them are in English. So there's a lot of opportunity unfortunately we don't have great publishers in the vernacular languages who can actually get it to the uh, reader as as good as some of the english multinational publishers do just 5 seconds i just like to add one point ma'am uh, you know actually there is no competition between english and vernacular because frankly the indian vernacular space is the world's second largest market when it comes to languages the next billion users are not in english are in the vernacular space so being a startup founder i was like forget english you have to be in the vernacular space so actually the inferiority complex is on the english side vernacular is way ahead and vernacular is the future so 500 million users in hindi alone that is huge huge all right so thank you so much for your questions and thank you so much for fantastic uh, panel uh, a last comment from my side before we wrap up thank you for uh, being a great audience as well uh, to validate the one uh, you know one area where we have received a very you know big push back uh, in terms of balgatha alone uh, is regional languages you know uh, we tried to launch a show in tamil we shut it down after two episodes because the feedback we got from the audience was this sounds like a third generation tamilian from bangalore i want that mailapur chennai accent okay the audience is going to be extremely demanding they are not going to be any different than any audience anywhere in the world yeah so if you don't deliver them what they are looking for they will actually make your life miserable if you give them what they're looking for they will love you and they'll stay with you with that uh, thank you so much again and have a great uh, rest of the festival i hope